and welcome back to Toby's Real Skills with Toby. In today's video, finally, we will work on a Raspberry Pi 4B. I think it's a B version, 4 gigabyte. I got my hands on one and I really tried the last couple times to, you know, use the image from Raspberry and install it on a cheaper version of a Raspberry Pi, at least at the moment. I read about that the Raspberry Pis might be on stock, starting in July, who knows, I was able to find one. I was using the Raspberry Pi locator or the Raspberry locator.com. Um, oh, the right link is here, and uh, you have to be you have to act very fast to get one. I made it work. Mine arrived today, and I was able to start working on it already. So, what it did, I ordered the housing. I ordered the Raspberry Pi. I do have an HDMI mini or micro to HDMI converter cable, so I can use my other. Um, so I can use my display, which I have. Um, everything what I'm using in the, is in the description below. Just if you're wondering if you have a similar one or same one. And I connected it already. I tested everything. And now I want to show how it works. Because I feel like this is the easiest possible way to install Victron Venus OS, as of today, version 3, on a Raspberry Pi 4B with 4 gigabyte RAM. And I was impressed with how quickly the response time was on the um, touch screen. And I was really happy with it. So I want to show you everything I did. And it's it's fairly easy and it's fairly quick. I was surprised. So I just did a little research, you know, configured everything. And I want to show you step by step what you have to do. I have a list. And the first thing you want to do... Whoop, whoop is unpacking the thing, right? And what I did, okay, sorry, a step before. What I did, I got here, um, I hope, wait a second, here. You can see, there is my housing. I put a Raspberry Pi 4, this time in a passive cooling housing, so this is full aluminum. I just wanted to see if it works better. Not better, but if it works compared to the active cooling fan. So I'll give it a try, that's the one. Inside is the Raspberry Pi, so here you can see those um, new USB-C connector. The I think it's HMI Mini. I hope I'm saying correct. If not, it's the Micro HMI Micro. Two of them, and then of course we also have oh sorry this side we also have um, where the slot where we have to connect the Micro SD card, and that's what we will start with, Micro SD card. So. Whoop. Here you can see I have a SanDisk. I'm using the SanDisk Extreme Pro, 64 gigabytes. So that should be plenty of speed and plenty of space for the image we want to use. And I want to go for the large version today. So the second thing, after assembling the housing and putting the Raspberry Pi in it, if you don't want to do it, don't waste your time on that. Just start with it. What are we doing now? So first step is we have to find the right image and we have to write an image on the SD, on a micro SD card, and therefore I'm using this whoop, micro SD card adapter. And that we can start with the first step, we'll download the right image. And therefore I have navigated already to um, the, res uh, the repository where they have all the recent version of Venus S. And we have to make sure in my case, in your case, if you want to do it with a Raspberry P, uh, Pi 3, um, totally fine. They have an image which is the Raspberry Pi 2, I believe it's called. It's just one folder up here and then you see there's Raspberry Pi 2 and there's a 4 and for the 3 you have to use the Raspberry Pi 2 image. So for the 4, I want to download the Venus image large, Raspberry Pi 4, and I want to download the latest possible version. So I'm going with the um, zipped file here, which is this one. And of course I prepared something already because I wanted to have it happen quicker. Sometimes the download takes a little time from the repository. So we have it here and I'm using my good old 7-zip friend and just extract that really quick. There we are. We have the file, which is a WIC file. The next we need, that's something you have to download, it's the Raspberry Pi Imager. I have it in the version 1.74. Not sure if there's a new version. Um, downloaded a couple of weeks or months back. The next we want to do, we'll take our adapter card or micro SD card, whatever slot you have, and you want to plug in the card. So, two things we have to do. First off, apologies that this 
version of the Raspberry Pi image here shows in German slash sometimes English. And in this case, we'll select the operating system. That's what it's called. Therefore, we want to have our own image. Scroll all the way down, own image. And then you navigate wherever your unpacked file is. So mine is here. I guess you could use it without unpacking. I did unpack it. So that's what I did last time and it worked well. So I'm selecting the file, say open. Now I'll select the um, SD card. I'll hit right. Yes, everything will be deleted. Totally fine with me. And of course it's happening. So let's wait until it wrote everything, which what's supposed to be an image on the micro SD card. Finalizing. Yep, we're done. It's ro it wrote successfully everything to the micro SD card. Hit next. Unblock the card. And what we're doing next is popping in the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi. It's supposed to be very fairly easy. And it's in. I have the display over here. Then I have my adapter cable. Plugging it in here and then closest um, mini micro, <laughs> sorry, HDMI port to the USB C charger. Then I need the wire in here, which will start our Raspberry Pi. And we can see it here. The lights on. Oh, and of course I have to connect the touch screen. And I just want to have it laying here so you can see it. Um, there's something happening. It doesn't matter what's on it at the moment. Because what we're doing is way cooler and way easier. There is very little, very little command line input needed at all. But what we need next is a good old smartphone. Sorry, I, I yeah, I connected it fresh. So the booting up and everything works so we can see there's something happening. But okay, we need a good old smartphone and then you can see can I see it? Yeah, it's running already. And then we have to download, if you have not downloaded already, already the Victron, Victron Connect app, which is this one. Let's start it. And right now we can, or you cannot see it really, but I can see it. There's, it's just blinking in the console right now. Console is the wrong word. In the terminal right now. And there's nothing happening anymore on, on the Raspberry Pi. So that's, that's where we're at at the moment. It's just waiting and idling. But what's cool about the app, um, of course, there's a ton of other stuff, which is other stuff I have from Victron. But you can also see other devices. And that means that should be a device which is not connected to your system as of now. So that means when I hit it, I should be able to connect because the connection is like this distance, right? I should be able to enter the password, which is the default 6x0 password. And then you hit pair. And in theory, it should connect immediately without any problems. As I can see already, there is some weird behavior going on. Might not work. So I can tell you, I did try to connect earlier with two different phones a couple times. And at one point, randomly after rebooting, I think at least three or four times, it just randomly connected. So I do not know why this is the case. I feel like I allowed everything permission-wise on my phone, but yeah, I don't know. So I guess that's something which is happening right now as well. So best case scenario, we'll reboot a couple times, we'll try to connect to it, and at one point it just works. Uh, as mentioned, I had a second phone I tried it with earlier, but no luck. But let's see. So at the moment it sits at 80% and it tries to connect again, and at one point it will throw a, a failure, maybe, maybe not. We'll figure that out soon. And there it is, unable to connect. I'll hit close. Now you can see the Raspberry Pi is now grayed out, which means we cannot connect to it anymore because when I click on it, cannot connect, Bluetooth is busy. So that means something seems to either work or not. So when I go back and forth, I hit refresh down in the corner. Maybe it tries to connect or not, I, I don't know something's happening nothing all right means for me I'll unplug the cable the power cable from the Raspberry Pi I'll boot it up again we'll try again as mentioned can happen I don't know how many times I hope it's not happening too much but I saw videos out there 
from people connecting with older versions without any issues. Maybe it's a version issue. Hey, who knows? As long as we get to the point where wanna be and we don't have to <laughs> repeat it more than three or four times. <laughs> All right, it's booting up. I can see it already, cool. There it is. I'll try to connect again. Still have the default. Zero is connected. Oh, wow, look at that. The second time, or second try, it worked. Maybe it needs a reboot, who knows? Yeah, unsecured access. I'm not changing default password as of now. But the amazing thing, you remember last time we had to go, I know in this video, we had to go into the command console already. We had to connect it to, to a keyboard, to the display. Then we were typing and manipulating some files to connect to the Wi-Fi. Skip that part. We'll do it in here. Amazing. So you see we are connected here with via Bluetooth. Then we hit uh, in the upper corner right this little setting wheel. We say network. Scans all the networks. I'll pick one of my networks, which, uh, you know, type in the password. I'll say hit connect. And even there I had to hit it a second time last time t and say, hey, retry. <laughs> Something's not working, but then it was able to uh, and, uh, connect. And first try, first attempt this time, already connected. Amazing. When I go back, fetching data, let's see, I don't know if I need that. I'll refresh. And here we are. It says other devices. So one is connected, generic Venus device, and then we see on, under other devices, it tells us, hey, there's the Raspberry Pi, and it has this IP address. Amazing. <laughs> when I click on it, firmware version 3, we can connect VRM console already. All those nice things. God. But that was, sorry, that was already a step, a step number two, at least in my opinion. Who knows? So what do we do next? We have already a working and functional Venus OS connected to the to our Wi-Fi, which means we can connect via remote already on our computer, from our phone, whatever we want to. We continue on the computer now. And that means I saw the IP address. So I'm using the IP address, right? That's the IP address I saw. And then we have already a very nice, looking Raspberry Pi or Venus Venus Raspberry Pi looking nice. Anyways, you get a point. Um cool. Device list, it's the time is off. So the next thing in my opinion was step three. I don't know which step we are actually, but next step is first of all, we'll adjust the time. Because uh, that is something which I wanna have and I'll adjust to the Pacific time. You adjust it to whatever time zone you're in. Uh, I'll use, yeah, this one, double click, and there we are. And the next step is just to verify, hey, do we have the latest and greatest firmware version on here, even though we just downloaded it. Um, so we'll go in here, firmware, online updates, uh, auto update, check. Check for updates, shows us there is a version update available to version three. Not sure why. We'll do the update. I'll hit OK. Downloading install firmware three. Even though we just pulled the latest version. So I think there's something in the making. Let's see. I'm so excited. Now it's doing the reboot. And I reconnect. Nice. There we have it. Latest possible version. Settings. Let me go to firmware. Online. Press to check. Last version. Latest version. Nice. What's on the agenda next? It's pretty simple. I want to have the setup helper because with that package, with that setup helper, what do you call it? Package program, everything else will be super easy. Thanks to the developer, Kevin. Amazing. Um, so how we install it, um, you could do the installation um, through a SD card, you, or SD card or USB stick, or because 
we already connected via remote anyways, well, at least I am. I'll do the enable SSH first, which is up there, but I'll show you again how it works. It is totally simple. Um, and therefore, go to settings. We'll go to general. And then you see user, access, user and installer access level. We have to use either our keyboard or we click and hold for at least five seconds the arrow to the right. So I'm holding the mouse now. And then we see an access to super user. Now we set a password. Setting my password, hitting the check mark. And then I'll go down here SSH on LAN, activate this one. That's all we need. What do we need next? We'll need our beloved putty or putty. And I have to connect to this IP address, right? That's my IP address, whatever IP address you have. Hit enter. First time we need to accept something. Uh, you didn't see, but I need to accept something. And now I'm logging in with the user root and the password you just set. And now we are connected via SSH remotely to our Raspberry Pi 4. I'll switch really quick to this package, the setup helper package from Kevin. Scroll down because there is some readme and description information. And when you scroll further down, you will see another way to install setup, setup helper is to use the following from the command line. That's what we want to use. You copy the first row. I uh, copied it with the shortcut um, Control C, and I will paste it into the putty with a right click on my mouse, and then hit Enter. And then we let it run. That's all. The next step will be copying the next row. I'll do the same. I copied it with Control C on my keyboard after I marked it, obviously, and I will paste it in here into putty with a right click and hit Enter. Last row, same procedure, and then I hit enter. And now it asks us if we want to install it or what do we want to do? Available actions down here. And then we want to type in I and enter. And then it will just do the magic and install the package by itself. Restart the GUI now or later. We want to do it now because we want to be done with it. So I'll hit Y and enter. What's happening now? It's restarting the GUI. So that means we'll go in the other tab and click restart. Now we'll do a reboot, because reboots are always good. Going to general, and then hit reboot. Give it a minute, until it's back up. And there it is. I'll go into settings. I'll I'll go all the way down. Package manager. And now I want to go into inactive packages. Scroll down to. We'll start with the display setup. Double click on it. Add display. Yes. Double click on proceed. Now it's disappeared. I want to do the same with the RPI temperature already, so it's just, you know, activated and I can do whatever I want to with it. Oops, sorry, I'm going too fast. And then go on back, go to active packages. Here you can see already there's jump, something jumping back and forth. RPI display setup install setup must be run from command line. And since this is jumping back and forth, when I hit enter, I have to right click, restore the connection, connect again. And what we need now, it's not too complicated. Very important, of course, the display is connected via HDMI and the USB for the touch. So I will type in data, then it's the RPI, I believe, display setup, and then it's called setup.
I will copy this command as well into um, the description below. Here it is. Hit enter, and then I want to install it. So I'll hit I, enter. And now it depends on what kind of display you have. Um, and disclaimer here as well, I played around with it. I wanted to dim the display. And it looks like HDMI displays, when they connect it, you cannot dim them or they're not planking out or something. I'm not sure why that is. When you have a Raspberry Pi specific touchscreen, cool, then you it will work with the, with the toggle um, of making it brighter and less bright. With this one, it wasn't able to make it work, so up to you. Um, what do you want to do? I'll continue here with R, even though it's an HDMI display. And uh, the other question is rotate the display. No, I don't want to rotate by 180 degrees because how it is right now, it's good. And then enter custom blanking and dimming device. Um, I don't have that, so also do no. And that's already it. And now it's rebooting. All right. So something weird happened. That's why I stopped. I had to figure out why. I did the first install of um, the Raspberry Pi display setup, and somehow it interrupted and did a reboot. Because usually it should have asked me, "Hey, do you want to calibrate your touch touchscreen?" And yes, I would love to do that. If something like that happens, don't worry, don't freak out. You can install this package as many times as you want to and configure it again. If you type something wrong in it, no worries, um, it will work again. So what I did, everything rebooted, um, think, I don't know, yeah, some, some kind of, I don't know, you don't have to see it. It's somehow working, but it's not calibrated at all, horrible. So what I'm doing, I'm connecting again, putty, because that's where we need to finish the, or do the same what we just did, open the path and the setup for the Raspberry Pi display setup, hit enter, now we do instead of reinstall or something which you think or would think what i did <laughs> i tried already no worries just do the install again type in i i'll use r again because i also read um i think a little bit above here um there are displays which might act like a raspberry pi touchscreen or something this one might be one so just just go with her this one if for whatever reason you know more about it i'm happy to hear those comments below um, we go with r i'll do the install i'll say no to the 180 degrees i'll say no to the dimming device and planking and now it asked me that's the question which i was waiting for and i was surprised no i'm not asking you <laughs> yeah do you want to calibrate my touchscreen oh absolutely thanks for asking so yes and then it realized oh was not found yes please install it as well so download it and yeah you need to have an active internet connection hit yes or hit enter sorry and it's already downloading everything oh i love it so much i can tell you so i'm moving this over a little bit so we can see more a little bit more you don't have to see everything Let's try this yeah i know that's a gopro so it's ultra wide angle at the moment um, the display is straight no worries and now the reboot is happening by the way if you haven't seen it sorry talking too fast talking much youtube is great because you can just you know talk a little bit back and then you can re-listen sorry about that anyhow um let's wait for the reboot Ooh, that's amazing it did already realize hey yeah i configured as a as a head what is it the headless display or something we in the you know in the last video which is already one or two years ago, we had to go in and change one file from headless to headless off or something. Not the case. And here, that's what's happening. It's very small and tiny. That's what I love it about it. It just works out of the box almost. Now I have to calibrate it. And therefore I need my finger, touch it, touch this, touch this, touch this, basically in all corners and in the middle. And then it does the magic with configuring it as it needs to and i think another reboot is necessary this is amazing because it's so quick i think i think because of the video it, it feels like it takes long but this is only like 20 to 30 minutes so far maximum with just one command so far well and repeating <laughs> that's all so now it's rebooting and now the console is starting and here we are so i'm using my finger it's it's not a good picture but i'll show you one time so you can see it i'll 
tip once and it worked uh, i'll tip on firmware once it worked I'll tip on online updates once it works check for updates i think i have to double click this one it's checking Ooh, another one up oh error during checking interesting oh okay probably not in another connection fully here so Let's install one more package and then we'll connect it to the VRM console online. Because those are the last two things. So now I'm using my finger here. Ah, I can, by the way, sorry, I can connect it here back to the console, obviously. And then uh, this is so smooth. I don't know what I did before. It was never that smooth. Um, package manager. So if it's similar to you, is it a new version? Version 3? Or is it maybe just a more proper installation with the setup helper? Let me know, know in the comments below. So before I install the package, auto install packages. When I turn this on, everything which is in active packages will be installed after reboot latest. So that is very cool. Um, but I'll do it now manually and say, yep, install. Wait for it real quick. Oh, there we are. Go to menu. And there we have it already. I'll do, what is it? Nope, not this one. It's so nice and quick. I'll put the name. Now I'm using my keyboard, which is, <laughs> sorry, I can use it here. It's pretty, pretty good, but. I oh, can hit enter here, go back, back. Now we can see it. When I go to page, I see nothing. Now I could install the GUI mods. I could install everything which is in the setup helper, basically. I could install the GPIO um, for the uh, relay board. I could install even what I did with the um, two wire, I'm uh, sorry, two wire, with the one wire temperature sensor, all those kind of things, you know, I could do, but we don't have to. The last thing we want to do, or I want to do with you, I'm connecting to the VRM console on the Wigtron website. I uh, want to see all my installations. So. It's pretty easy and pretty straightforward. You can skip this part if you don't want to see this. But when we are in uh, the overview, all installations, here on the right side, add installation. And then I'll select Servo GX. There's an installation ID. And now you need to know your installation ID or your VM console. So that means we are scrolling down to settings. This is way laggier than touchscreen. Oh, God, sorry. We'll go to VRM online portal and I'm, you know, hiding my VRM portal ID. I don't want you to use the same, <laughs> but use this portal ID and put it here in installation ID. And then you have to give it just, you know, an installation name and I'll use Raspberry Pi 4. That's all I want to call it at the moment. I think I can change it anytime later. And now hit connect. And there we have it, Raspberry Pi 4. Let's go into settings. One more thing we have to adjust. So you want to go in settings. You want to adjust... In online port, you want to adjust and set the lock interval to one minute, ideally. Not that you have to, but, you know. And then... You get a refresh every minute. And here we are. Very cool. Uh, that's my installation. This is such an exciting improvement, what happened here. Thanks to all the developers from Victron or uh, also freelancers and also all people who are interested in this project and improving this. This is such a huge improvement in how quickly you can set it up with very limited knowledge, I feel like. I mean, the only difficulty difficulty is when you want to use a touch screen um, as well of course with uh, the display configuration but I try to make it as simple as possible and I try to put all the links in the description so you will be able to find it you will be able to copy and paste everything basically the same how I did it and when you just follow this you are so quickly that you have that you just have you know your console set up and you see it and oh, okay one thing I, I, I have to show you and that is so cool when you have installed the GUI mods here if you see this when you click oh, is this my finger and you, you 
with the GUI mods you can change to dark mode. Oh god, can I? Yeah, there it is. Did you see this? And you can see it as well, which is so funny. Even the remote console, when you connect it via um, remote in a browser to it, it changes to dark mode as well. That is so cool. Thanks for this feature. Thanks so much for this feature. It's amazing. But yeah, there are plenty of options. So now the typical thing, if you like this kind of videos, please like it, please subscribe to the channel. Um, I like to do those kind of things. I like to understand also if you want to continue seeing stuff like that, because there's obviously a bunch of other things I also like to do, since this is Toby's real life skills with Toby. Still me, my friends. But it's just my DIY channel, basically. So everything I like to do, I try to make a video and try to educate you. Well, that doesn't work all the time, but educate me and what I learned to show you. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers!